Hello friends, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be making lemon, rosemary, strawberry scones. Say that five times fast. <laughs> um, I'm gonna kind of go over your ingredients and utensils and we'll get started. Ready, ready? Let's do it. Okay, um, I found this recipe on Pinterest so I will tag it in the uh, info box below. But you're basically going to need powdered sugar and regular sugar. Powdered sugar is for the frosting. Baking soda and baking powder. Milk and heavy cream. Vanilla extract. Butter. All-purpose flour. And your lemon, your strawberries, and your rosemary. The actual recipe is for lemon raspberry scones, which I have done. I added the rosemary when I did them the first time and they were fantastic. I don't have any more raspberries, but I do have strawberries that are like in perfect ripeness and I wanna use them right away. So we're gonna try it. Riff on this recipe, riff on all your recipes. If you don't have raspberries, try blackberries, try strawberries, you never know. Tools you're gonna to need is obviously cutting board and knife to chop your fruit. I have a little baby whisk for my dry ingredients. To make these scones, it's a little unconventional. Ice cream scoop. Honestly, it's just the laziest, easiest way to just scoop, plop, be done with it. So, um, measuring cups, measuring spoons, your liquid measuring cups, and I will be using a KitchenAid mixer. You don't have to use that at all. You can just use a regular bowl and elbow grease, but it's totally up to you. So let me clear all this <laughs> out of the way and we will get to baking. Yay! <laughs> Okay, so to start, we want to get a few things prepped and then we can really put the whole recipe together. First, we need to measure out one cup of heavy whipping cream and we're actually going to put that aside in the freezer so that it can get really, really chilled. Not frozen, just chilled. Next, we are going to take eight tablespoons of butter, which I didn't grab. Let's try that again. We are going to take eight tablespoons of butter and we are gonna put it in a microwave safe bowl and microwave it until it's melted. Now, this recipe is gonna to lie to you and tell you to put it in there for uh, a whole minute. Don't listen to it. Um, definitely listen to it when it says to put a paper towel on top, but if you put it in there for a minute, depending on the wattage of your microwave, um, it will melt and then it will explode and it will coat the entire inside of your microwave in melted butter. And then you'll have to stop making scones and spend 30 minutes cleaning your microwave. Just a hypothetical thought if you follow those instructions. Totally not something that happened to me at all. No, not at all. What I'm going to do instead that is safer and has just worked better for me is I'm going to cover it in a paper towel just in case so that if any explosion does happen, it's maybe a little less explosive um, 10 second to 15 second intervals keep an eye on it don't walk away just trust me because when you hear that boom you're like oh I know what I have to do now great so excited to get elbows deep in some butter cream in the freezer I have to go this way. <laughs> now what I want to do is prep my fruit. So we're gonna chop up some strawberries. Prop, ch chop up some strawberries, <laughs> juice our lemon, and zest the rind. Okay? Okay. Oh, I guess I should mention how much fruit. It says a half a cup of fresh raspberries, so we'll just do half a cup of strawberry. Right? <laughs> While I have my cutting board out, we're gonna go ahead and just get the lemon juiced. This is for the frosting. So I'm using a very ripe lemon for my juice and then just a plain regular ripeness lemon for the zest. I'm going to clear all this off and we'll be on to the next, which is dry ingredients. Mm. Let's get started on the dry ingredients. We are going to get all purpose flour and we need two cups. I like to use my little scoop. This way I can fluff my flour 
and then scoop it into my measuring cup without it compacting the flour really good. This way I'm not putting more flour than I need to. I just shift back and forth to make sure it's level, scoop off the excess. All right, sugar. We need six tablespoons. That is a very odd measurement, but I don't ask questions. Got my tablespoon. Next is baking soda. That is half a teaspoon and half a teaspoon. Oh no, geez, I forgot about that. A whole stinking tablespoon of baking powder. Level it out. Say a quick prayer. Kosher salt, whoops. <laughs> I've got some kosher salt and we need half a teaspoon. You can use kosher or table salt, just pay attention to the measurements. They are different from salt to regular iodized table salt. I'm gonna just kind of whisk this together real quick, crush up some of those clumps. All right, zest my lemon. I washed this really well. Make sure you do that because you don't want a nasty lemon zest in your food. This is the zest of one large lemon, so try not to hurt yourself. Smells heavenly, oh my gosh. Okay, whisking one more time. We're gonna set this aside for right now. Finally, we are at the assemble stage. <laughs> I have transported my dry ingredients to my mixer. We are going to whisk together our very chilled heavy cream, which mine is even, mine is even frozen slightly on the side, which is fine. It's just the fats, you know, freezing. So what we're going to do is we are going to pour our butter, which is cooled by now. We don't want it piping hot. We're gonna pour the butter into the heavy cream that's nice and cold until it almost like curdles. <laughs> just, just bear with me. It's going to kind of congeal and curdle almost and turn into globulars and that's what we want to get some really good nooks and crannies of butter in these scones. Just fingers crossed, it works, I promise. And it actually just dawned on me, I used a whisk last time and it was a mistake. Is this specifically in the recipe and I should have paid attention. Last time I used a whisk and all those globs got stuck in the whisk and it was a huge pain. So we're gonna use our fork, like it says. It recommends that you have the, the heavy cream in the freezer for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I didn't really have to worry about that because if you do it at the very beginning, I'm such a slow mover that uh, it's probably like been 20 minutes. <laughs> it's getting thick and chunky and looking real gross and that's what we want. <laughs> as weird as that sounds, that's what we want. Can't really tell, but it's... <laughs> it's basically just turning the room temperature warm butter into little shards of really cold butter, having been with the frozen-ish heavy cream. We are going to drop the mixer, lock it, and slowly incorporate until everything's together, but not overmixed. Scooping helps. <laughs> it smells great. As soon as that buttermilk hits the lemony, zesty flour mixture, you can just smell that lemon immediately come to life. Immediately. So now we're just gonna finish it off. Just until all of that cream and butter mixture is, is incorporated. Oh, it looks so good. I just thought, when is the vanilla? Is there vanilla in this recipe or did I just assume? I just assumed. So there is no vanilla. Um, that's fine. <laughs> it's not necessary in every recipe. So here is a perfect look. Come on, come on. Come on, thank you. There's our dough. 
I forgot to chop my rosemary. I'm going to chop this up. And you know, this would be a perfect time to preheat my oven, which is a 400 degree oven. I laugh because I live in Arizona and the idea of turning my oven on to 400 degrees when it is 110 degrees outside just sounds like a literal death wish, but you know, the things I do for baking. 400. I'm actually gonna add my rosemary to my strawberries. If I had to guess, I would say half a tablespoon. Add however much you want. Okay, so we're gonna add our strawberries. And we are going to hand mix with the spatula so that we don't over mix it. <laughs> Probably should use a bigger spatula. You can tell it's very glutinous. It has a little more body than a cupcake. Everything is mixed in well. Final step is plopping and baking the scones. So I've got my batter. I've got a spring loaded cookie cutter. It's very important. And then I have a baking sheet with a silicone baking mat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop. I'm not gonna fill it completely because it'll be huge. And plop. Literally could not get any easier. Um, they could be prettier if you wanna kind of like, roll, you know, curve over the edges so it's not all floppy. You certainly can. I don't care. I like the rustic look. They're just gonna puff up and inflate anyway and form their own size anyway. But also at the same time, I feel like a scone is supposed to be kind of lumpy and bumpy. And then you cover it with this beautiful glistening frosting. Like, there's something charming about that. Okay, I'm still waiting for my oven to preheat. In the meantime, I'm going to put this in the freezer to chill so they have a little more um, hold before we put them in the oven. So. so while the scones are chilling and then baking, I'm going to make the frosting. Um, I'm not gonna do the full amount that the frosting asks for in the recipe because last time I did that and I didn't use all of it. So instead of two cups of powdered sugar, we're gonna do one. And I should be using my scoop, but I'm not because it's dirty and I like to live my life on the wild side and I also like to make a mess because, hi, I like making messes. And then it says for three tablespoons of milk or half and half. I'm gonna just use milk, three tablespoons. One. Actually, we'll do one and a half because I just realized I halved it. So one and a half in milk. I'm still gonna do a whole tablespoon of lemon juice because I want it to be really lemony. I can add more powdered sugar if I need to. Okay, and we'll whip it. Whip it good. I'm realizing the whisk attachment isn't a good decision. I'm gonna change it. I'm going to switch to my paddle attachment that has a silicone uh, rubber on it. That way it can kind of grab all of the powdered sugar. And I can already kind of tell this is too wet, so I'm gonna add more powdered sugar. Now let's mix. And we want it to be glaze-like, not frosting-like. Not even icing-like. Glaze. Think like a donut glaze. Taste it. Hmm. You know, some more lemon zest might be good. Let's do that. It's gonna be hard, but I don't wanna get a whole other lemon out. Don't try this at home, kids. All right. Just for a little extra lemony goodness. All right, one last bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
supposed to be 18 minutes to about 20 minutes so they did get a little darker on the bottom than I had hoped but for the most part they look okay you usually wouldn't want them to be quite this golden but um, I don't care <laughs> because I don't want an underdone scone so try starting with the 18 I thought they would need longer because they were bigger but clearly that wasn't the case start with 18 and if you need to go longer longer and then I let them cool for about 10 minutes on the cookie sheet so that they would be, you know, manageable and not falling apart. But we still want them to be warm while we ice them so that the icing kind of melts into and around the scone and makes a really good glaze. So I have made my own little glazing station here. It is a cookie sheet lined with tin foil and then a cooling rack placed on top of it. This is so that I can glaze and set it down and then it drips onto the pan versus puddling up around the scone. So let me just show you how this is done. I've got my icing. It's a nice thin runny icing. So what I'm gonna do is move my spoon because it's just gonna be in the way. I'm gonna grab a scone, just like this. I'm gonna dip, make sure all the edges are covered, pull it out, let it drip for a second. That way it's not too much. And then set it down. And that's all you have to do. Now in the recipe it says to spoon the glaze onto your scones and I'm not about that life. I work at Dunkin' Donuts. I know how this works. You just dip and it, it does all the work for you. None of this spooning and trying to make it even and all that nonsense. It's crazy. One of these I decided to experiment because it was the very last bit of the batter and there was no fruit in it. So I sliced a little piece of lemon and then some really thinly sliced strawberries and just blocked it on top. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, I only have two more left, and I have just enough frosting. The first time I made these, I actually just really wanted to try the recipe out. I'm really excited to try the strawberry, um, because the rosemary, sorry, not the rosemary, the raspberry was good, but it wasn't as like fruity as I love, and I love fruity, so I'm actually wondering if I should try one right now while they're still kind of warm. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Let's go with one of the first ones that I glazed that got a little overdone on the bottom. That way I'm not serving that. Yeah, see, like, that one's really overdone. So let's just do that. That way I'm not serving that to someone. You know what? Let me get closer. So here's my scone. <laughs> bottom got more uh, done than I wanted it to. Let's break it in half. It's not hot at all. If anything, it feels like a fresh, warm biscuit. The glaze has already set, which is what you want. So you can actually see your hands. Ooh. Definitely fully cooked. Nice little soft bits where the strawberry is. So make sure you can see. Let's try it. This one has a piece of strawberry in it, so let's try that. You know, it's interesting, that bit of caramelization on the bottom from being overcooked actually gives it like a cornbread kind of mess to it. Mmm. Divine. I love them. I love the lemony. I love the texture. They're soft, but they're also robust. I don't know how to explain it. Oh. Mm hmm. Hmm. 
make these. Just, just trust me, they're so easy. So, the batter itself is not very sweet at all. It's not supposed to be. The sweet is supposed to come from the frosting. So, if you're expecting something super sweet and, and cupcake-y, you've come to the wrong place. Make your glaze thicker or cut it into pieces and dip it or drizzle and you'll get a little more sweetness. But it's a perfect level of sweetness. It is not a cupcake. That lemon, the rosemary is great. And you can see little flecks of it. And it's pretty, and you don't taste it. It's like, it's almost like you smell it. it it's aromatic without being overpowering. Ooh. Well, now I've just basically eaten a whole scone. So, <laughs> make these. They're delicious. They're cute. They're easy. They're so easy. Um, I will be doing more dessert person recipes eventually. And the queen is coming out with another book, so don't you worry. I will be getting back to them. At this point, I'm just kind of like trying a little less involved recipes. And a lot of her best recipes are very involved. So you'll be seeing Claire, you'll be seeing cooking. I'm, I wanna try to start doing some more savory cooking dishes. You're gonna be seeing all of it for me because I'm back. I'm in this beautiful kitchen where I have so much room to play and create and have fun. And I'm just really excited to take you on that journey of me just playing and creating and having fun. So once again, thank you for watching. If you liked it, maybe like the video, subscribe, tell a friend or two, and try these dang scones. They're so good. And they're just so easy. Okay? Okay. Uh, love y'all. See you later. Bye.